What is going on my fellow makers? Welcome back to Keep Making. I'm Matt and today I'm going to show you how I made these 3D printed modular cavern scattered terrain pieces. Let's get to it. So starting off with the STL files I'll be using. So these are from a maker called Curafin. Uh, these are the 28 millimeter stalagmites and I'm also gonna be using their 28 millimeter cavern crossings and the links will be in the description below. Then I use these rock formations from Dutch Mogul as well as these Gloomhaven stalagmites uh, from a maker whose name I don't remember right now but uh, I don't cover the painting of these in this video but if you wanted to print these when you see them at the end uh, the link will be in the description below. So after I pull these all off the printer I'm going to be using some muddy ground from AK Interactive uh, to add some texture to the areas where there will be a pool and a water feature later on. Uh, I do this just because the printing lines that it leaves when you print sort of a rounded layered formation um, are a little bit, um, I don't know, they just don't look great and when we dry brush these later on, uh, those really pop out. And you'll see some of that on the rock formation files that I print. Moving on to this texture paste, a crackle texture paste, Game Workshop sells something similar to this, I can't remember what it's called, uh, but this is just sort of a cheaper alternative, although it is this awful pearlescent color, uh, so you know, you can't use this trail of the bottle for a finished piece unless you're going for that, but uh, yeah. So all of the pieces got this gray primer and then this charcoal gray uh, spray paint. And I'll be using some of these oil paints to add some washes, so these four colors. And I also use a red color. And this is all to match a dungeon board I already made a few years ago. Uh, I want these to be consistent with that. So I use the thinner for the oil paints and I just mix up a bunch of washes and then I get to covering the entire piece with those. Now one important thing to note is I did clear coat these pieces before applying the oil wash because that thinner can erode your paint if you're not careful. So I just clear coat my stuff with a matte varnish uh, just to make sure I'm not getting any uh, paint wearing off. So obviously because these oil washes are really saturated, it looks really weird at this step, but don't worry, I'm gonna fix this going forward. So the way to do that is we wanna bring back the rock look and these washes will just serve as a variance um, and sort of bring some added detail. So the way to do that here is I get a lighter color, a highlight color of the gray, and I take most of it off on a paper towel and then I'm dry brushing the very edges of this. So with barely any paint on my brush, I'm just rubbing it across the highest points and that'll bring off some of that color and really give a uniform um, uh, highlight to it. Then we wanna add some shading. So to sort of tone back and desaturate all of those bright washes, uh, I'm gonna use a black wash all over. This will get into the recesses the same way the wash did, but it'll desaturate them and it'll bring a really uniform look to all of these pieces. Once that black wash is complete, I'm going in with this warm white and we're going to do the cavern pool. So I use both the same technique on both of these models of what you would have seen a little bit earlier, but I'm just hitting this. It takes multiple coats to get the sort of coverage I want for the white. But once that's done, I add some brown wash with some black wash and I hit this whole area. So then I went in with some pigment powders. I just used this like desert sand one and some uh, like a dark green just to simulate some, uh, you know, erosion happening within the pool and also some weird biology going on down there. This green actually would uh, affect later on, which uh, I'll talk about a little bit then. So I just spray these down with some IPA to seal them in place. And then I'm moving back in with that warm white to just highlight those areas with another dry brush and bring out some of that detail. 
Now, the epoxy I'm using, so to make that sort of pool, I'm just using this five minute epoxy, way cheaper than you know the normal two part epoxies you can get. This is like a dollar 25, and I just add some wash there. Uh, usually, paints can be a little bit too thick and cause them to go opaque or translucent. Uh, I really wanted it to be a transparent look, so I just add some wash. This is a blue wash from uh, Army Painter, and then on a bigger pool, I actually use Coelia Green Shade. So obviously these five minute epoxies you have to work really quickly with and they don't find their level as well as other two part epoxies might. So you do have to work quick and really urge it to get into the corners so that you have a you know nice flat layer of it. Waited the five minutes for the epoxy to cure and here's how it all turned out. So that'll do it for this episode of Keep Making. I am very pleased with how this turned out. Very cheap to do, obviously using the five minute epoxy, quick working time, and it's like $1.50 uh, per one of those you know, uh, bottles. Um, straight up just primer and craft paint. To get these, you don't even, well, you should probably use primer. Uh, you don't need to use oil washes as I said earlier. You could use, you know, watered down craft paints or uh, any washes you have on hand. Um, this was a pretty quick project. You could probably get this done in an afternoon or over the course of a day. Um, it took me a couple days just because I was busy with some other things and editing and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, super fun project. Uh, these are super modular. You can use these in a bunch of different settings, not just in caves, but if you had some sort of uh, I don't know, scourge land or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, let me know what other builds you want to see me tackle, some other uh, biome terrain or, or whatever the case is. I've got that fungal Sylvanath war band coming soon uh, and some war cry stuff coming. So uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, overall, you know, I'm pretty pleased with how these match the board I made years ago. So uh, that's awesome. I've got some more D&D &D stuff coming too. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you give this video a like. Helps out a lot. And uh, yeah, keep making.